Hey, it's me. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. And remember to like and subscribe. And if you've never came to my channel before, I thank you very, very much and welcome. Okay, now I'm here to talk about the futility of arguing. Now, I'm going to be reading from 2 Timothy 14 to, to the beginning of 15. And then I'm going to move on to 2 Timothy 22 all the way down to 25, I believe. Okay. Now, as a preface to all of this, if that's the right word to use, preface, as a prelude to all of this, I'd just like to talk a little bit about arguing. Now, the kind of arguments that happen in this world, I can just give you a few examples. It could be a young couple who is bickering and arguing about financial problems, for example, and they keep splitting up, getting back together again. That is such a typical scenario of so many young couples that I've seen throughout the whole of my life, okay, and I'm almost 34 years of age now, and it's very, very common, okay, so that's one kind of arguments, um, there's intellectual arguments, do you know the types of people that argue, uh, that, that argue with each other on uh, YouTube, you know, these atheistic uh, humanists and evolutionists arguing with the uh, Flat Earth Brigade and all oh, the Earth is only 6,000 years old and all that rubbish and nonsense, okay. Uh, don't have anything to do with these stupid arguments and so-called intellectual debates because it's, because there's nothing intellectual about them. To tell you the honest to goodness truth, both the flat earthers and people that think the earth is 6,000 years old, they're completely wrong, of course they are. But so are the flipping evolutionists, these people that think that everything came from nothing and... Uh, and uh, these people who believe in the in the first self-replicating molecule and 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 in uh, macro evolution, that's all a load of crap as well. You see, like neither of them have got it right. In other words, in this world, we've got two intellectual extremes. We've got the creationists who are convinced the Earth is flat, or or if they don't believe the Earth is flat, they believe the Earth is only a few thousand years old. That's nonsense. And so are all these extremist atheists who believe that everything came from nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and that everything somehow came about from nothing. And um, I mean, it's like saying that a tornado could go through a junkyard and create a, a Boeing 747. It's just impossible, okay? So both sides have got it completely wrong. Anyway, enough about that. Uh, anyway, I'd just like to talk about arguments in general, okay? And they don't do anybody any good. Now, whenever I get worked up or angry about anything, uh, I like to drink some chamomile tea. I always find that that calms me down. It soothes me, you know. Uh, but everyone's got their ways of dealing with anger and frustration and arguments. Exercise helps an awful lot as well. You know, uh, anybody who knows me knows I do my 660 reps with my 7 kg dumbbells. That keeps me toned and everything, keeps me physically, well, relatively fit. Uh, some people like to go for long walks, some people like to go jogging. I used to go jogging regularly years ago, but I've gotten out of the habit of it now. Um, yeah, anyway, what I'm going to do now is read from, yeah, 2 Timothy 14 to 15, and then I'm going to add my own little bit of input into that, okay? Now, 2 Timothy 14, a workman approved by God. Keep reminding them of these things. Warn them before God against quarrelling about words. It is of no value and only ruins those who listen. So let me read that again. Keep reminding them of these things, which is why I'm doing this video, okay? Because I'm trying to remind whoever's watching this video not to argue. No matter what the argument's about, it could be about money. It could be uh, all sorts of quarrels, you know? Warn them before God against quarrelling about words. So, in other words, we shouldn't be quarrelling about, what, about what's written in the Bible. We shouldn't be saying, oh, I know better than you, or you took this out of context. Yes, it's true. Some Christians do take the Bible out of context. I mean, look at the Mormons, for goodness sake, and the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses. But they're just cool, so that's not real Christianity. Okay, but, but even so, even with even when we're dealing with people like Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses, it doesn't do any good to argue with them. It's completely fruitless because it just creates bad blood. Okay, anyway, it says it is of no value and only ruins those who listen. Never forget this one thing, and I'm only going to say it once in this video, that the vast majority of this world, whatever their worldview is, 
whether they're atheist, agnostic, Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, whoever they are, most people have their own presuppositions and they don't like other people to try and change their minds, okay? It's different if somebody is genuinely curious and interested about Jesus and about the Bible and about Christianity as a whole. That's different. If, if they have a genuine interest and they actually want to listen to you, then by all means talk to them, okay? But the vast majority of people on this earth don't want to know about anything other than what they're thinking about, other than what they believe. And sometimes people are just so busy living their lives and trying to achieve what they want to achieve and do what they want to do, that they won't listen. OK, so most of the time it's fruitless to have arguments with people. OK, arguing almost never achieves anything. OK. Now, there's a good kind of arguing. Now, there's arguing that actually leads to something concrete, that actually leads to something good. Some arguments can be good because we can work things out by arguing, but most arguing is fruitless. And it's up to us as Christians to be able to tell the difference between good arguments and bad arguments. Okay. Now I'm going to move on to 2 Timothy 22 all the way to 24. Okay. Right, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness. Now, what that basically means is that when we're teenagers and we're young, we tend to be randy, we tend to get in the wrong relationships at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. Um, and by being took over by our, our passions, whether it's our sex drives, our, our, it could be about drugs, alcohol, anything, you know, it can lead us into trouble. I mean, how many men and how many women have had their lives ruined because... They've gotten together with the wrong person at the wrong time for the wrong reasons, okay? That's just one example of what this means when it says, flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness. Now, that is very, very difficult to do, okay? I'm a red-blooded male myself. I myself have never had a relationship personally, but <laughs> I can only imagine how hard it is to keep focused on the bottom one, what's written in the Bible, and on God when we're just thinking about girls or in a woman's case we're just thinking about men okay it's very very hard and we can be distracted by all sorts of things okay and it says here flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness faith love and peace along with those who call on the lord out of a pure heart don't have anything to do with foolish and stupid arguments again this world is full of people that are bickering and arguing I mentioned earlier about the intellectual, so-called intellectual debates that are going to come to nothing in the end. Um, and it says here, because you know they produce quarrels. So in other words, as Christians, we're supposed to be at peace. You know, in other words, as and when it's appropriate to do so, we should let sleeping dogs lie. Why poke the hornet's nest? You know, why create waves when it's just going to create dissension and we're just going to create enemies in our own family and in the world at large. It just does not make any sense, OK? And it says here, the Lord's servant must not quarrel. Instead, he must be kind to everyone, able to teach and not resentful. OK, and I'm going to leave it there. Um, Second Timothy is very, very good because it goes on to godlessness in the last days, which is Timothy 3, which is a very, very good part of the Bible. I would definitely recommend it. I have read it out in a previous video. I've forgotten which one it is now, but uh, yeah. Anyway, before I end the video, I'm just going to have a quick think, see if there's any more nuggets of wisdom I can give whoever's watching this video, okay? <laughs> so, um, well, first and foremost, I'd like to say that I'm going to pray for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to help you with whatever problems you have, whether they're financial problems some people have problems with their mental health, financial problems, relationship problems. Some people are, are, are in debt financially, they need help with that. Some people have health problems. Whoever you are uh, in the world watching this video, I know I only have a small YouTube channel, but even so, you know, uh, I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ for you to be helped, okay? Uh, look, man, I'm not perfect. I never said I was. But I find that a lot of Christians pretend to be better people than what they actually are. And those people are hypocrites. That is not me, man. That is not me. I tell it how it is. Okay, I've n I never said I was perfect, okay? And um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm the opposite of perfect. I'm a sinner. The only difference between 
uh, an unbeliever and, and and a Christian isn't that unbelievers are are are, are uh, evil and that Christians are righteous. It's just that Christians realise that they need Jesus as their personal Lord and Saviour, whilst unbelievers don't realise that. That's the difference, okay? <laughs> if anything, sometimes Christians can be more sinful than than what a lot of unbelievers are. So just bear that in mind, okay? And uh, all, all this ties in with um, what I was talking about arguing. We shouldn't argue with each other. Because whether we're believers or unbelievers, let's say we're a Christian trying to convince an unbeliever that um, that they're wrong and that we're right, unless they're prepared to listen, unless the argument is actually leading to something concrete, then don't bother, because it's just going to create a rift between you and that person, okay? And remember what I said earlier on? A lot of unbelievers are actually more righteous in their behaviour than a lot of Christians are. The only difference between a Christian and an, and an unbeliever is that a Christian realises they are a sinner, and that they need Jesus as their personal Lord and Saviour, okay? And it's only in Christ that anyone can call themselves righteous. I know I'm not righteous, um, but, uh, it's, it, but it's written somewhere in the Bible that um, some people in this world end up being saved, not so much from what they say or what they claim to believe, but from what's in their hearts, what they actually do. So some people go throughout the whole of their life saying, oh, I don't want anything to do with the Bible. I don't want anything to do with Jesus. It's all a load of rubbish. They may say, well, well, I believe in evolution. I believe we're just space dust or whatever <laughs> half-baked ideas have got in their head. And um, But at the end of the day, God ends up saving them anyway. So we shouldn't judge people too harshly. Okay, We should never judge people. And it's by judging people that often leads to arguments too. OK, look, we're all entitled to our opinions. We're all entitled to have our, our, our own beliefs. But as Christians, we should live and let live. OK, there's no point in rocking the boat unless there's a very, very good reason to do so. All right. And um, I'm going to leave it there. All right. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye and take care.